Vamos a hablar hoy de muchas cosas. Y la primera cosa es, vamos a, vamos a presentarnos uno al otro. We're going to introduce each other. Uh, we're going to introduce ourselves to each other. Uh, before we do that, we're going to have a little warm-up video. This little warm-up video may seem like it's irrelevant, and it really is not. It is about something called muletillas. Muletillas. Uh, I just wrote it in the chat box. Muletillas. That illa at the end makes it small. Muleta, muleta is a crutch. So muletillas are little crutches. And that's what this video is about. It's about little crutches, muletillas. Muletillas are little filler words that don't have a good translation. And you may say, why are we learning this? <laughs> because when you listen to people speak, they use muletillas all the time. They are little filler words. Think of how many times you use words or phrases like, well, so, um, right? All those little things in English are muletillas. We call them filler words. <laughs> But you will hear people use these in conversation a lot. And so we're going to hope in our introduction session that you'll be able to use a little muletilla somewhere. So I'm going to show you a little video. I'm going to share with you the little video on muletillas. Um, you, uh, you don't need to take notes because I am going to have a set of slides on these muletillas later. You might want to jot down a few things, but not a lot. Uh, but a couple words here and there. Uh, things that you know you would use when you're thinking to get an idea out of your head and you need a pause word, okay? Uh, but we're gonna share this now, watch it for about six or seven minutes. And then we're gonna come back and do an introduction. And now I'm gonna see if you can put into your introduction, I'm gonna ask you to weave into your introduction one or two of these little muletillas as you're talking. Okay. Um, vamos a ver. Here we go. So, escuchen bien. Listen well. Y vamos a ver. Your favorite Spanish teacher. And I have a question. How do you say the word in Spanish? Uh, the, uh, and you must answer in Spanish. Uh, the, the, um, the, uh, uh, no sé. I don't know. I've told you a thousand times. La palabra is how you say the word in Spanish. Ah, yes, yes, yes. But that is not today's topic. Why did I have to answer that? I wanted to know which Spanish filler words you knew. Because that's what we're learning today. The 10 Spanish filler words you need to learn. The 10 Spanish filler words you need to learn. But why? When you speak in everyday life, you need filler words. Especially when you need time to think about something before you speak. Of course, when we speak Spanish, we do the same. It's called moletillas, which means little crutches. But first, what is not a filler word in Spanish? De. 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 Uh, de. Uh, de. Uh, de, uh, de uh. I don't know why, but you guys often use the word de as a filler word when you speak Spanish. And we just don't do that in Spanish. What are the appropriate filler words in Spanish? Here are the 10 most important. Bueno, well, or good. 
It has many uses, but you can use bueno at the beginning of a sentence if you need time to answer. Bueno, no sé si mañana voy a clases. Hey! Uh, bueno, no sé si mañana voy a clases. Entonces. Ah, my favorite muletilla. I use it a lot. It's like so or therefore in English. You can use it either at the beginning of a sentence or in the middle of two sentences to join ideas. No tenía dinero para salir, entonces me quedé en casa. No tenía dinero para salir, entonces me quedé en casa. Otro ejemplo. Entonces, continuamos. Pues, pues, no sé qué hacer este fin de semana. A very useful word in Spanish. You can express uncertainty with it. Pues, no sé qué hacer este fin de semana. It's also pretty useful. We need time to stall when you're speaking Spanish. Pues... Olvidé la última palabra. A ver, two words. It's like, let's see, in English. A ver... ¿A dónde vamos a ir de vacaciones? A ver, ¿a dónde vamos a ir de vacaciones? It's like a short form of vamos a ver. We will see. Vamos a ver. ¿A dónde vamos a ir de vacaciones? I think, I think that's enough for today. I would really rather just... Vamos a ver. Vamos a ver. You can also use it when people are speaking over you and you need to bring attention to yourself. Digo. Literally translated, it means I say. But we use digo to correct ourselves if we make a mistake while speaking. La clase empieza a las ocho. Eh, digo, a las nueve. Also, when you want to explain something more clearly. With digo, you will sound like a native speaker in Spanish. La clase empieza a las ocho, eh, digo, a las nueve. O sea, o sea. I read that with it, you can express something more clearly in Spanish, or you can elaborate on something. How that means in English. Esta es la última muletilla. O sea, que se terminó la clase. No, no se ha terminado. Now we have así que. Así que is a bit like entonces because with that we can join two ideas. La fiesta estaba aburrida, así que me fui. La fiesta estaba aburrida, así que me fui. You can also start a sentence with that when you're speaking Spanish. Así que vamos al cine hoy. Así que vamos al cine hoy. Este. It means this. Yes, but as a muletilla, you can stall for time with it when you're speaking Spanish. Este... ¿Cuándo acabamos con el tema? Este... ¿Cuándo acabamos con el tema? Pronto. Now, es que... Didn't we just talk about that? Es que... Ah, ah. Like, it's just in English. Es que el examen de español estaba muy difícil. Es que el examen de español estaba muy difícil. Ah. Ah. En fin. En fin. En fin is a great muletilla to wrap up a conversation in Spanish when it doesn't end all too naturally. You know, when nobody knows what else to say. And you want to avoid that awkward silence. En fin, terminamos el video. Eso es todo por hoy. Muchas gracias. Okay.
Está bien. Vamos a ver. Ok. Ah, vamos a ver. So, uh, a lot of those are little muletillas that are useful when you're talking to somebody and you want to seg from one idea to another. Or the two that I really, really like that are stall words that people use all the time when they want to say um, um, <laughs> are pues, and este. And that, that word este is a little, um, little deceiving because este technically means this, like this thing, but here este, when you use it as a filler word, it doesn't mean anything at all. It's, it's an um word. <laughs> um, um, este, este. Este, okay. Uh, Tienen preguntas. Do you have any questions about these little muletillas before we be before we go off into groups and start using them? Sí o no? No hay preguntas. Okay. Vale. Entonces voy a empezar. Uh, voy a empezar. Uh, voy a darles mi ejemplo. Voy a darles mi ejemplo. I'm going to give you guys my example. Bien. A ver. Uh, a ver. <laughs> ok. A ver. A ver. Bueno. Bueno. Por ejemplo, soy Marilyn. Soy Marilyn. Esto es para presentarme. This is to introduce myself. Uy, a ver, momentito, momentito. I've got somebody coming in a little bit late. Okay, entonces, mi ejemplo. Ah, bueno, bueno, me, me llamo Marilyn, me llamo Marilyn. Soy Marilyn Bittner y uh, uh, vivo en Fountain Hills. Vivo en Fountain Hills. Uh, um, este, okay, soy de, soy de... Uh, Michigan, originalmente soy de Michigan, pues también vivía en Chicago 11 años. Uh, viví en Chicago, cerca de Chicago, 11 años, uh, pero ahora, ahora vivo en Fountain Hills. Tengo dos hijos adultos, dos hijos adultos. Tengo, tengo un hijo de 25 años y una hija de 21 años. Y me dedico a, me dedico a, I dedicate myself to, that means I work as, me dedico a enseñar español. Me dedico, me dedico a enseñar español. Uh, voy a escribirlo aquí, eh, pues, en fin. Me dedico, uh, y tengo que cambiar este, uh, ok, eh, he escrito, me dedico a enseñar español, this tells what I work at, me dedico a, me dedico a enseñar español, me dedico a, and, a verb, not conjugated, that tells what work I do, enseñar, ¿ok? Entonces, es una presentación. That's a little, little short presentation. Um, I would like you to take a few minutes to collect your thoughts, maybe jot down some things you want to say about yourself. I'm going to send you off into chat rooms for about, oh, maybe only three minutes. We don't want a term paper about your life story. <laughs> we just want simple stuff, where you're from, where you live. Maybe you want to say you have a pet. Maybe you want to say you have kids, grandkids, nietos, lo que sea, whatever it might be. Tell that person, whoever you're paired off with, because computer's going to send you off with somebody randomly. Tell that person a little bit about yourself. Okay? Si tienen preguntas antes de empezar, if you've got a question before beginning, 
feel free to ask me that question now. And I want you, I would like you to try to below the radar, scooch in a uh, uh, pues, a uh, bueno, a ver, entonces, este, because you're thinking and you need a pause word, one or two of those for when you need to pause. No tienen preguntas? Ustedes son avanzados. Wow, you guys are advanced if you have no questions. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to send you off into little chat groups. And normally I would come in and check on people, but because this is going to be short, I'm not going to this time uh, because it'll only be about three minutes because that's all it takes to introduce yourself, right? Uh, okay. Uh, voy a empezar con algo aquí. Breakout rooms. I'm going to send you off into breakout rooms. Uh, a ver. Uh, some of you may have three people in the breakout room. It may vary just a little bit. Uh, and it will also send you a message when I'm about to take you out of breakup room so that you know you've got about 40, 60 seconds left to go. Vale. Okay. You will have to hit or click, I should say, click the join button. Ooh, momentito. See, uh, you will have to click the join button when I send you off into the room. So it will not put you in the room unless, unless you click on the join button. I'm going to open up the rooms now. You'll need to click your join button and go off into your groups. Tres minutos, three minutes.
Okay, así estamos listos. We're almost ready. Got a few people coming back in. Muy bien. ¿Y cómo les va? How that go for you? Bien. Vale. Okay. Estamos casi juntos. We're almost all back in. We're going to make sure we have time for everybody to get back in. Vale. Bueno, ¿tienen ustedes preguntas? ¿Tienen ustedes preguntas o al, alguna pregunta sobre vocabulario o algo? ¿Sí? ¿No? Este, ok. Ok, bien. Uh, a ver, uh, voy a escribir por máquina, voy a escribir aquí a uh, uh, dos sitios, dos sitios, two sites. I'm going to uh, write down two sites uh, that you may want to use, especially if you're a new person uh, joining this group. Uh, two things you may want to use. One is duolingo.com. It is a free site. They will prompt you to do a monthly fee, which you do not need to do. Okay, I just X out of the commercials. <laughs> um, but Duolingo will uh, help you to build a lot of vocabulary and you can use it five minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, however long you feel like, however long you have time for and it will build in little chunks. And uh, it will, uh, in addition, um, you know, do things in a very um, precise way. Oh, whoops. I'm sorry, I'm reading a couple of emails that came in from our people. Okay. One person had to leave, perdón. Ok, a ver. Uh, a ver, ok. Uh, bien, bien. Ok, so Duolingo helps you build vocabulary. It, it will incorporate some small, little, very short snippet uh, uh, listening segments, short snippet speaking segments for you to repeat words. Uh, little bits of grammar, but it will not really teach you grammar and, of course, lots of vocabulary and lots of repetition. So it's a helpful thing. Uh, another site I'm going to type down here um, is uh, wordreference.com. This is an online dictionary. You may want to use this to prep for next week. When I give you your little assignment to prep for speaking practice next week, you may want to uh, use this ahead of time. This is just an online dictionary. But the wonderful thing about wordreference.com is that um, it will show you definitions used in context. Uh, so you'll see uh, how to translate a specific word into the context you need. Por ejemplo, por ejemplo, uh, por ejemplo, uh, to leave. If you want to know how to say to leave, um, do you mean to leave a building or to leave something behind, like to leave a tip at the table if you go out to eat? Those are two different words. So word reference would show you in context how those words are used so you understand, oh, here's the meaning I want to use. Here's the word I need. So you may want to use that for uh, preparation uh, to get ready for the speaking practice that you've got the vocabulary you need that you want to use for next week. Um, the other reference, I'm going to whip out all of my big papers here. Some folks ask, do we need this book? 
I would say we're probably not going to heavy duty use it until the third week, maybe not next week, but it is great for reference. In the email I sent to you, uh, you know, many of you already have, the majority of you already have this book. But if you took the step one, that means the absolute beginner class from me, it was a different book than this. Uh, this book, we will not follow in lockstep, and that means we won't start on page one and go page two, page three, page four, page five. We will pick different topics, um, and some of the practice is a little too dense, but it is a wonderful uh, and very comprehensive reference book uh, if you need to look something up quickly, uh, you know, a quick topic. And there will be some uh, exercises we will do, not until um, uh, week three, not next week, but the week after. And I know that now with in the age of COVID, uh, if you're ordering this book online through Amazon, and that's what I'll send you the link for so you'll see what it looks like. Um, you know, things could be delayed in the mail, but I can say them just so you know. Okay, está bien. Uh, bueno, ¿qué vamos a hacer? Okay. A ver, uh, vamos a repasar, vamos a repasar y ampliar. We're going we're gonna to kind of broaden this topic of muletillas. ¿Y por qué son importantes? Why are these important? Now that we're done with our reference information, muletillas, muletillas. Las muletillas son importantes um, para escuchar, para escuchar, especially for listening, because native speakers will slip these words in constantly. To be honest with you, like every third or fourth sentence, you'll hear muletillas in a typical conversation. And we do this in English too, but it is a really subconscious thing. You know, we're not aware that we even do it. Um, so I do wanna show you something. You don't need to write these all down because I'm gonna send these to you. I'm gonna send you this file I will show you. So please don't feel you need to uh, take copious notes. You do not. I will send you the link to pull this up so that you can save it as a file on your computer, print it, whatever is comfortable for you. Muletillas. Y me encanta el término muletillas. I really love this term because yes, they are kind of crutches, right? but everybody uses them all over. I've segmented this out a little differently from what you heard on the video. Uh, here are our pause words. How to say well, so, yeah, and bueno, wow, this word we use to start off a sentence really, really frequently, bueno, and yeah, you always, oh, bueno is good, eh, buenos dias, buenas tardes. But bueno often is used as that well lead off, right? Entonces, así que they're pretty much interchangeable. Those two words, they're pretty much interchangeable. Bueno will hardly ever be used in the middle of a sentence. It usually leads off. And I really, really love this word, pues. People use this pues word all the time. A good thing to know about pues, which looks like pus, but does not mean pus. <laughs> pues. Yeah, we, because we pronounce every letter. Pues. Ah, pues. This word, pues. Pues. You'll, people, you'll hear people draw it out. Pues. And that's because... People are pausing to think of what word they want to use next. This is one of those words that often indicates a certain amount of uncertainty. Oh, what word was I searching for? Ooh, what do I mean exactly? Pues is that kind of word. You're searching. You don't know what you want to say next. You need that, that time to pause and think. Pues, okay. So there are words. Oh, I love these words. A ver, a ver, a ver. A ver is a shortened version of vamos a ver. That's a longer form. Let, literally, let's see. Vamos a ver. We're going to see. Vamos a ver. 
vamos a ver, but usually in short conversations, it's shortened to a ver. Well, let's see, a ver. Uh, and again, it's kind of a starter, beginning of the sentence kind of thing. A ver, a ver, a ver, voy a, ah, a ver, ahora tenemos clase. A ver. Um, a ver, um, a ver, a ver, ¿qué, cuál, cuáles son tus preguntas? What are your, oh, let's see, what are your questions? A ver, okay. Uh, a lot of these uh, can be used for the I mean or the that is. And this one I'm going to underline in, in, uh, in particular because you hear this word a lot, o sea, o sea, o sea. And if you typed OSEA into a, a translator, well, depending on which translator you get, uh, that OSEA is plugged in by people all the time. OSEA. I mean, that is, that is to say, the OSEA de es decir, the digo word. In particular, but that that phrase "osea," wow, a lot. We use that a lot. Uh, un ejemplo. Uh, a ver. Um, hoy durante la clase quiero explicar cómo usamos descripciones. O sea. O sea, ¿cuáles son adjetivos que, que necesitamos usar? Okay. O sea, o sea, ok. A ver. Oh, here's the ah uh, word. Ah, uh, este. And sometimes this is drawn out. Este, 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 este. And sometimes even en. That e, eh, that vowel. E in English, E in Espanol, E, E, E. E is the resting place in Spanish for your tongue. Where we have A as a resting place for a pause. E is how Spanish speakers, <laughs> E, that middle empty space of your mouth, E. So este comes out pretty naturally as in the A uh word or um word, uh. Okay, este. And, oh, we're going to add a few extras in here, uh, like como or como que. You'll hear these inserted in the middle. Um, I have a little video I'll probably send you in the link for homework, although it is a kind of advanced video, so it'll probably go a little more, uh, a little, yeah, it'll, it'll go a little faster paced than maybe what you're comfortable for. But you'll hear people use it. So the, the video link I will send you You'll hear pe people using como and como que and how they use it in a sentence. And that'll be the thing to really pay attention to, the conversations where people use it. Uh, en fin, to wrap it up. En fin, to wrap it up. But here's another uh, little set of muletillas that are really super, super frequent. And these are what we call tag questions. Uh, they usually come uh, at the end of a statement. Uh, tag questions because they're not a whole sentence. Uh, but here are the most common ones that you hear people salt and pepper their conversations with. No and verdad are totally interchangeable. They mean the same thing. When you want to say right, or yeah, or isn't that so, or isn't that right, you use these two words, no, verdad? And you'll hear it with a little, uh, the, you know, uh, your voice trails up. No, verdad? So you can tell it's a question. No, verdad? And I'll tag on to the end. Tenemos clase hoy, no? Tenemos un libro nuevo, ¿verdad? Like that. The next little word you see down there is sabes. Sabes literally means you know. And that's literally, well, 
You know? Yeah, sabes, sabes, sabes. Uh, sometimes you even hear sabes que, you know what? <laughs> sabes. And this bottom one I am notorious for because I was a student many years ago in Spain. I use this all the time and it is such a habit. I use it a lot. Not yet heard as much in Mexico. When I speak with people from different countries, they sometimes ask if I study in Spain because I use this word so much. Vale. Vale. Or vale as an exclamation. Okay. Vale. Continuamos. Vale. We're going on. Okay. Vale. Okay. <laughs> All right. But a great muletilla. Uh, these phrases up here, no, verdad, sabes, vale, uh, they're kind of rhetorical, you know, they, uh, you kind of already assume you know what answer you're getting back from that person, but it's sort of a, a, an audio clue to say, I'm just checking with you, did you get that? And, um, okay, está bien. Bueno, tienen preguntas, tienen preguntas antes de empezar. ¿Tienen preguntas? ¿Sí o no? No, nada. Ok. Ok. La segunda cosa que vamos a hacer. Uh, the second thing that we're going to do today. Uh, la segunda cosa. The second thing is we're going to see and think about how words link together. And you will need this for doing your homework to prep for speaking next week. We'll use this now to show how we talk about things. Um, the hardest thing for everybody to do when they're getting comfortable with a new language is always speaking. Okay? Siempre. Hablar es difícil. Uh, Hablar es muy difícil. Escuchar es más fácil. Listening is a little easier. They have proven in actual research on how the human brain works that the skill you get comfortable with first is listening. So, you know, even if you think, wow, people talk really fast, your listening skills still even if you feel slightly uncomfortable with the fast pace, your listening skills, skills are still what get honed, what, what improves first, okay? Um, the speaking skills take a long time to get comfortable with. So we're gonna try to always build into all of our les les lessons some speaking skills. We're gonna do more listening skills today but you'll be doing some more speaking skills uh, next week. But in order to get comfortable with speaking, you've got to know how to make your brain think and link those words together. And that is really the problem. Because for a lot of you, whether you've been studying, studying Spanish for quite a few months or a year or a couple years or just a few weeks, your brain is going to want to think in whatever language you used first. For most of you, that is English. For some of you, it's not English. But we want, as English speakers, to put everything in order like we put it in order in English. And you can't do that. Uh, it won't flow if you translate word for word for word for word. So we want to think about how do we think in chunks? Uh, we think in chunks, we, th we think in groups of words. And that is going to mean that we have to put words in a different order to make it flow nicely. 
so that it feels more natural coming out of your mouth. So we have to rewire our brains, literally, to think in a different word order or to think of which words hang together. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that today. See if you have questions about that. And I'm gonna show you some listening examples of that. Está bien. Okay. Ustedes no necesitan tomar apuntes. No necesitan escribir furiosamente. No necesitan escribir furiosamente. No, no, para nada. ¿Por qué no? Porque tenemos archivos aquí. We, we've got files here. Okay, ¿está bien? Vamos a ver. So we're going to take a look at these files. If you want to jot, jot a couple of notes for yourself right now so that you know what you want to ask a question about, that's okay. But don't feel you must copy these because you are going to get copies of all this stuff. Um, okay, a ver. Uh, uy, momentito. Okay. Vamos a empezar aquí. Bueno, think in chunks of words. Don't translate every single word in isolation. How to start to think in Spanish. Thinking in Spanish is a challenge for most people. That is because the order of the words in English may be quite different. And you're piecing together all these different bits of information. Keep in mind, as we start this idea in this little lesson, that your most important objective as a speaker, not as a listener, as a speaker, is to get your basic idea across. So I don't want people to stress, for example, about, oh shoot, I used el, la, los, las incorrectly. Don't stress about that. Oh, I didn't use an el, a la, a los, a las. I, oh, oh, I didn't use an una, una. No, don't stress about that. Stress about getting the main vocabulary right. And uh, if, and using a verb, the main action, right? That, that's your ultimate goal, to be understood uh, by that person with whom you're communicating. That is your main goal. Uh, of course, we would all like to sound like we're, you know, grammar queens and grammar kings, but uh, that takes time. Okay, this is a very long goal. Uh, oh, congratulations. Yeah, I was typing so fast I forgot my S on congratulations. You are normal. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, if you're raised in a bilingual family, this, there, there are probably tricks your brain has already used to move from one language to another that may help you with this new language. Okay. But Thinking in this language means you're going to be thinking in a different word order in addition to thinking about putting in all the right vocabulary. So, you know, this is a, a challenge that is very gradual, takes a lot of practice. So we're going to look at two of these chunk ideas today. And I'm going to then show you some examples of chunks. And I'm going to ask you to help after my examples, to supply some of these chunks. Okay, the two chunks we're gonna look at are words that hang together in a noun phrase. Uh, los sustantivos, nouns, los sustantivos. Los sustantivos son importantes. Nouns are important because they name things we wanna talk about. And quite often we wanna describe those things. So that means we need to be able to use those words with a certain amount of confidence, okay? And the second thing is, the second chunk, <laughs> is a person doing the action and pairing that up with the right verb from those dreaded, dreaded verb conjugations, uh, which are always 
for uh, English speakers very, very challenging because English just does not use as many conjugations we do, but we don't use as many of them as other languages do, Spanish in particular. So those are the two big things, nouns and actions, things and activities. Those two, those two issues, those two uh, chunks, if you would, verb phrases, if you would, wind up hanging together to make a sentence that makes sense, okay? Because we want to express our ideas. So let's take a look at that first chunk. Word order, patterns yeah, for noun phrases. You have to think of the noun as the little sun and in its universe, okay? Every word related to that noun has to make nice with that noun. That means it has to agree with that noun in its form. We call that a uh, noun adjective or, you know, uh, agreement. Agreement means everything needs to be in the same form. So if that noun is masculine or feminine, every word that talks about that noun will also have to be masculine or feminine, right? The words for the, el, la, los, las. The words for a uh, or some, un, una, unos, unas. Uh, a possessive word like me, my, mis, my. Uh, tu, your, tus, your. And then adjectives. Gordo, flaco, <laughs> fat or skinny. Alto, bajo, tall or short. Uh, interesante, aburrido, interesting, boring. All those descriptive words, all those things have to agree with the noun they talk about. So we need to know what gender the noun is in. Is it masculine or feminine? And we need to know how many things are in that group of that noun. Is it just a onesie thing, singular? Is it more than one plural? Okay, a ver, so what does that look like? Uh, you have to think differently. Here is where we have to rewire our brains. If you want to say the beautiful women, don't think the beautiful women, think thus. I know that's not even a word, is it? Thus women beautifuls. That's the order we need to put it in in Spanish. Most adjectives follow the nouns they talk about. Las mujeres hermosas. Las mujeres hermosas. Look at all the things you're doing here. Mujeres, women, obviously, is easy to figure out. That's feminine. You know, yeah, women, ladies. Las mujeres hermosas. Las needs to be feminine plural, the. Hermosas needs to be a feminine plural descriptive word because mujeres is more than one feminine person. But it's not the beautiful women, it's those women beautifuls. Las mujeres hermosas. Las mujeres hermosas. Okay. A ver. My cute kids, my cute children becomes mice, that's not even a word. <laughs> Children, cutes. Mis hijos preciosos. Mis hijos preciosos. My cute kids. Eh, preciosos looks like precious. Yeah, that's what it means. We translate that as cute. Uh, generally, and that does not mean 100%. Generally, most adjectives follow the noun. Most. Yeah, you know, that's the way it happens. It's not the way we do it in English, and this is why your brain fights, fights, fights that. Okay. Mis hijos preciosos. Now, generally most adjectives follow the noun. Some adjectives, if adjectives talk about quantity, uh, an amount, or a number, those will not follow the noun. They will come in front. We'll see that pattern in a later lesson. So don't sweat it now. But things that talk about quantity, like many, a few, several, lots, 16, 
anything like that that denotes amounts, quantities. Those won't be the examples like mis hijos preciosos. Those will come in front of the nouns. We'll talk about that another time. Okay. A ver. Here is one snag to that idea. If you talk about what something is made out of, because here your, your English brain is going to do run into a snag. And we're going to take a look at that this in a minute after we're done with this slide. Uh, materiales, materials. English has lots of what we think is helpful words like wooden. That's an adjective. Uh, silver, like a silver spoon, a silver vase, a silver serving dish. Silver there is used as an adjective, right? Metal, a metal doorknob, a metal handle, a metal tool. Well, in English, we can use those words as a description. In English, you cannot. So in English, if we're describing a thing, whereas you could use wooden or silver and metal, in, in Spanish, you're going to use the word de to talk about the material. So to talk about color or shape or size, I do not need that word de. But to talk about the actual material something is made out of, I do need that word de. And we'll show you some examples when we pause after this slide. De plus whatever that thing is made out of, like de madera, wood, okay? Uh, de metal, something's made out of metal. De plata, made out of silver. De ceramica, it's a ceramic mug, okay? De oro, made out of gold, okay? Uh, a gold ring. Uh, de plástico. De plástico, plastic. Vale, ok. Y vamos a ver, vamos a ver. Voy, voy, a, voy a mostrarles unos ejemplos. Ah, es, a, a ver, ah, bueno, vamos a empezar con un ejercicio de escuchar. Un ejercicio de escuchar. ¿Sabes? Bien, ok. Por ejemplo, si quiero describir la taza, la taza. La taza, ¿cómo se dice la taza en inglés? La taza en inglés es... Cup. Cup. Mug. Mug. Cup. Mug. Tengo clase. Tengo una taza. Tengo una taza de café. Es mi café de la mañana. Cada mañana tomo dos tazas, dos tazas de café, ¿verdad? Ok, puedo decir, puedo, si quiero hablar de la taza de café, la taza es de cerámica, la taza es de cerámica, es de cerámica, ¿no? La taza es de cerámica, es una taza roja, es una taza roja, el color... Sí. Bueno, es una taza roja de cerámica. Tiene café. Tiene café. Es y es es una taza pequeña. Es una taza es una taza pequeña, ¿verdad? Pequeña. No es muy grande. No es un tazón. A great big mug. No. Es una taza. Bien. Ok. A ver. Uh, por ejemplo, otro ejemplo. Uh, es un cepillo. Es un cepillo, ¿no? Todo el mundo usa un cepillo por la mañana, pero hay muchos tipos de cepillos. Cepillo brush, qué fácil, qué fácil, ¿no? Pero hay muchos tipos de cepillos, por ejemplo, ¿no? Por ejemplo, es un cepillo de dientes. Es un cepillo de dientes. It's a tooth brush. En inglés se dice toothbrush. 
en español no se puede decir dientes, cepillo, no. Es un cepillo de dientes. Un cepillo de dientes. Es para, es para cepillarse los dientes. Cada mm. mañana, cada noche, ¿verdad? ¿Sabes? Bien. Bueno, es un cepillo de dientes, pero y, uh, es de plástico. Es de plástico. Es de plástico, ¿verdad? Es un cepillo, no es un cepillo de dientes, es un cepillo así, que, sí. que uso para cepillarme el pelo. Es un cepillo para el pelo, ¿verdad? Bien. También de plástico, pero para, para arreglarse por la mañana, ¿no? Para, para usar con el pelo, ¿verdad? Ok. Muy complicado. Es un cepillo. No es cepillo de dientes. No es cepillo para el pelo. Es un cepillo de maquillaje. Es un cepillo de maquillaje. Eh, para ponerme la maquillaje. ¿Verdad? ¿Entienden? ¿No? Ok. A ver. Es un cepillo de dientes, pero es un cepillo eléctrico. Es un cepillo eléctrico. Es eléctrico. Y un cepillo eléctrico, ¿no? No es eléctrico, es eléctrico. ¿Bien? ¿Vale? Necesite baterías. ¿Vale? Ok. Bien. ¿Está bien? Ok. Otro ejemplo. Otro ejemplo. ¿Puedo hablar? Puedo hablar de la cucha las cucharas. ¿Cómo se dice cucharas en inglés? Spoons. La cuchara. Si, si quiero hablar de las cucharas, no hay un solo tipo de cuchara. Esta cuchara es, es cucharada. Cucharada, a tablespoon, ¿verdad? Es una cuchara grande. Es una cuchara grande, ¿no? Es una cuchara grande, es una cuchara grande, uh, se llama cucharada, cucharada es más grande. Es, se usa, it's used, así que, así que, así que se usa para, para tomar sopa, ¿verdad? Se usa para tomar sopa. No se usa, no se usa la cuchara grande para tomar, para comer helado. No, para helado, no. Para, para sopa, ¿verdad? Ok. ¿Es de metal? Es de metal. Son de metal. Son de metal. Son de metal. Notice with materials, metal does not become plural. It's another noun. Son grandes. Grandes goes plural. Son cucharas grandes. Ah, son. Es cuchara grande. No son. Los dos no son grandes. Pero son de metal. Son de metal. And that metal is going to say singular. It's just talking about a noun, the thing, the material. Bien? Sí? Es pequeño. Es una. Es una cuchara pequeña, es una cuchara pequeña, se usa, se usa para, uh, ¿para qué se usa? Se usa para comer, el, ah, para comer cereal, se usa para comer cereal, se usa para comer, por ejemplo, por ejemplo, ¿qué más? Ah, helado, se usa para, para poner azúcar. En el café, para poner azúcar en el café, ¿verdad? Para poner azúcar y revolverlo, ¿ok? Sí, pero 
las cucharas son de metal, ¿verdad? Ok, a ver. Es una cuchara. No es de metal. No es de me Son cucharas grandes. Es de metal, es de madera. Es de madera. No se usa para comer. No. Es una cuchara de madera que, que se usa para cocinar. Se usa para cocinar, ¿verdad? Se usa para revolver, revolver los ingredientes en la sartén, en la olla, cuando, cuando cocino uh, salsa y italiano para la pasta, ¿verdad? Uh, ok. A ver. Bueno. Son cuchillos. ¿Qué son cuchillos? ¿Cómo se dice cuchillos? En inglés. Knives. Cuchillos. Son cuchillos pequeños. Son pe son estos, estos dos, estos dos son cuchillos pequeños. No es cuchillo pequeño. Es un poco. ¡Pa! Es buen cuchillo. Me gusta este cuchillo. Ok. Es un cuchillo grande. Es un cuchillo grandísimo. Es grandísimo. ¿Sí? Ah, se, ¿Para qué? Se, son, son, son todos de metal. Son de metal, ¿verdad? Sí. Ok. A ver. Ah, este cuchillo, este cuchillo es para pelar fruta, pelar fruta, ¿entienden? Es para pelar fruta o cortar fruta o, lo que, uh, o sea, uh, cortar como que quizás uh, zanahorias o a, a, algo, algo pequeño, ¿verdad? Ok, a ver. Bueno, uh, se usa para cortar la carne en el plato. Se usa para untar la mantequilla en pan o mantequilla de cacahuete, mantequilla de maní, peanut butter, sí. Para, para untar spread, sí, para poner la mantequilla en el pan, ¿verdad? Ok, a ver. Pero el cuchillo grande, uh, no lo uso para amenazar a nadie. I don't use it to threaten anybody. Oh, el cuchillo grande se usa para, para picar para picar verduras, para picar legumbres, to chop, picar, para picar legumbres, antes de cocinar. Uh -huh. ¿Comprenden? Ok. Uh -huh. Y por eso, por eso, es decir, es decir, hay que usar un cuchillo grande para picar legumbres, como patatas, como... Uh, como apio, como uh, cebolla, uh, como carne, un, un trozo enorme de, de carne, ¿no? Para preparar la comida, antes de cocinar todo, hay que picar con un cuchillo grande. ¿Bien? Ok. Es un cuchillo peligroso. Es un cuchillo peligroso. It's dangerous. Peligroso. Es peligroso. No es peligroso. No es peligroso. No se usa para amenazar. You're not going to menace anybody. You're not going to threaten anybody with this knife. No? No. no. no es peligroso. No. Claro. 
¡Qué ridículo! No, no es peligroso. Este, este sí es peligroso. Ok. A ver. Bien. Dale. Uh, things have to hang together. Ok. Está bien. Está bien. Bueno, la, la primera tarea, your first homework. You're going to talk about two things next week. They're both going to be short snippets. They will not be related. Your, for, your first homework is going to be to describe something. Any one thing. And I mean anything. Don't make it something complicated. Anything common that's in your house. That's why you're going to need that word reference.com. Uh, un ejemplo. Voy a darles un ejemplo. I want you to include a short description so that you get those noun and adjective things to hang together. Uh, I want you to tell me what it is for. What it is for. Uh, and um, I've got in the chat box there, para with a verb. You'll see what I mean. Para with a verb. You're going to see what I mean on the, the example. Okay. It need not be rocket science. But, bueno, el ejemplo es que voy a hablar de, del plátano. Voy a hablar, I'm going to talk. A ver, let's see. A ver, a ver, voy a hablar del plátano. El plátano es una fruta. Es una fruta tropical. Es una fruta amarilla. Es amarilla, ¿no? Es una fruta muy larga. Es larga, ¿verdad? Es una fruta larga, amarilla. Tropical, viene del Caribe. Ok, bien. Es, es una fruta muy dulce. Uh, en el Caribe se usa con arroz. Aquí no. Aquí en Estados Unidos no ponemos el plátano en arroz. No ponemos el plátano. Uh, no, no. No usamos eh, el plátano en un plato principal aquí en mm. Estados Unidos. We don't use this in a main dish in the United States. En el Caribe, sí. En el Caribe se usa en, en platos con frijoles, con arroz, pero aquí no. Ok. Es dulce. Ah, es para... Es para comer con, es para comer. It's for eating. Es para comer con cereal. Mm -hmm. es, para, es para poner en pan, como, como se dice en, en inglés, banana bread, sí. El pan con, con plátano, ¿verdad? Que es un postre, es a dessert, es un postre, ¿no? Uh, es para comer con helado. Es para comer con helado. Es para comer sola. Es para comer con cereal, ¿verdad? Así. So you're going to describe one thing. What it's used for. Uh, here I can't really tell what it's made out of. You know, if your thing is a spoon, you might want to use a de, de madera or a de cerámica or a de plástico. Okay? Depende. Depends, right? Sí, claro. Entienden? Okay. You may need to use word reference. If you're using an item you don't know that vocabulary word for, we fácil, very easy, tell you want to go from, you know, English to Spanish. And just give a short description. Okay. So that's going to be your first chunk thing to work on uh, for next week. Uh, algo muy fácil. Okay. Um, a ver. Um, preguntas. Voy a pausar. 
pues, ¿ustedes tienen preguntas? ¿Sí o no? ¿No? No, ok. Y no sean tímidos. Don't, don't be shy. Ok. Uh, I am going to share with you the second part of this. And we, uh, we're going to take a look at what that other half. This first half was noun phrases. And again, you're going to get the whole link to go to this file. Ooh, I do have to hit my share button. Okay. All right. Here's this other thing. And we're going to work on this a lot through the whole summer session with many different kinds of verbs, with regular verbs, with kind of oddball verbs, with verbs that people use a lot every day. But we have to look at the big picture first for our first lesson. And this is the second thing that challenges most people because this is where lots of people need to use a pues or an este because they're pausing to think, shoot, what verb do I use? Okay. And that's that nasty subject verb agreement, that verb conjugation piece that we will hope to practice a lot throughout. Uh, the summer. Uh, it is dreaded. Uh, people often say, do I have to do that? Can't I just use, can't I just take uh, cocinar and use cocinar all the time and put yo cocinar, I too cook. And no, you really can't because you'll kind of sound like, you know, the knuckle dragon guy. You don't want to be that guy. You want to sound like you know what you're doing. So, you know, we want to get comfortable with at least, uh, you know, a decent number of, of verb conjugations. And um, yeah, you know, sorry to say, verb conjugations is something that you need to start to think in that pattern. Uh, when you start to think in this pattern, it'll start to make sense. Uh, most hispanohablantes, hispanohablantes means people who speak Spanish, they don't bother to say the subject. So, you know, in English, and in lots of other languages too, you need to have that I or you or Tom, Jerry, <laughs> Louise, he, she, they. You need to have a subject, a human being. In Spanish, they'll often drop that because the verb tells everything. The conjugation of that verb tells who's doing it. And, and that's why they love that so much because they can like not even tell you who they're talking about. The verb tells you who's doing an action. In English, you cannot omit who is doing the action. You cannot do it. You can't do that in German either. You can't really do it in French, but you sure can in Spanish and people in fact do. And that doesn't mean it's a shortcut or it's a cheat thing. It's just what they do. It is allowed. It is considered proper. So, in English, you can't just say going to the store. Nobody would have any idea who you meant. Or work downtown. Well, who? Right? But in Spanish, the verb is going to tell you that. So they're going to drop the who often and just use that verb. Okay? But that verb might be in a present or a past or a future. We're only going to look at, you know, present tense for now. We will look at a cheat way to talk about future. Uh, but not formal future. Okay, so, por ejemplo, what does that look like? Por ejemplo, for example, vamos al supermercado. They don't bother with the we word. It's just vamos. That whole word means we are doing the action of going. We're going. Vamos al supermercado. Trabajas en el centro. Uh, you work. Uh, I should include uh, downtown because downtown is el centro, right? Um, whoop, perdón. Okay, so in Spanish, we are taking that underlined word in the second sentence there, and we're, we're dropping it. That verb conjugation tells who's doing it, okay? Uh, habla español in context, meaning in what you were talking about before the sentence and after, you'll know whether that habla means he's talking or she's talking or you are speaking, right? Uh, if the context needs clarification, people will include that who, like Luis habla, usted habla, mi amigo habla, okay? So once in a while for a third person, meaning you're talking about a human being or a group of human beings, 
then okay, you might need to tell who. But normally that verb conjugation, they won't bother with the who in other contexts. Está bien. We're good so far. See? Vale? Okay. Um, muy bien. A ver. Uh, bueno. Bueno, bueno, bueno. Entonces, uh, entonces, la segunda tarea. I'm going to tell you about your second homework now. And I'll give you my example so that you can know what you will need to do. And by the way, I expect you to jot some notes down, not to memorize everything. Wow, if you can, que inteligente eres, how smart you are. But you know, maybe you, when I was starting out, I would have to kind of, uh, you know, write it down first, practice it a little bit, say it, right? Uh, so you may have to do that. Okay, la segunda tarea, la segunda tarea, your second piece of homework. Primera tarea, hablar de una cosa. Your first homework is to talk about some little thing, any object in your house, a daily, uh, uh, you know, a household item. Uh, a food, a tool, a thing that's sitting on your desk, a thing you use for work, no importa. Okay. Uh, but it'll be short, right? Uh, this may be a little longer. This may be a little longer. La segunda tarea. The second thing, I want you to talk about a hobby you have for a short while. A hobby. A hobby. There is a word for hobby in Spanish. I'm going to put it in the little chat box. Uh, I'm going to put it, yeah. El pasatiempos. El pasatiempos. O plural, los pasatiempos. How you pass those minutes that you need to fill. Yeah? Pasatiempos. Pasa, yeah. Um, pasatiempos is a pastime, a hobby, something you do for fun. So your second thing is going to be a talk. And again, it's not a research paper, folks. <laughs> es para comunicar, es para expresarse. This is just to express yourself. Uh, and this is a, a, a no criticism zone. So nobody's going to think, oh, wow, that person had to pause and think and use an, oh, este, no, that's okay, está bien, that's okay to do that. That's why you learned all those little pause words today. So you can pause and do, oh, este, you can lead off with a, oh, bueno, you can lead off with a, ah, a ver, voy a hablar, voy a hablar, a ver, voy a hablar, ah, I'm going to talk about. Okay, el pasatiempos. Uh, voy a hablar, voy a hablar de mi pasatiempos. I'm going to tell you what it is, and I've written it in the chat box. Coser, coser. Uh, you may, again, need to check in your word reference to pull up your pastime. If, you know, especially if your pastime is something like skydiving, you don't need to look up that word because I bet you don't know that word. Yeah. Okay. Bien. Sabes. A ver. Entonces, voy a hablar de mi pasatiempos favorito. Mi pasatiempos favorito. Uh, una cosa que me encanta. A thing I love. Me gusta coser. Me gusta coser. I like to sew. Me gusta coser. Me encanta. Realmente, de verdad, de verdad, me encanta coser. Me encanta coser. Uh, me encanta coser muchísimas cosas. Voy, voy a mostrarles. I'm going to show you guys. Voy a mostrarles unos ejemplos. Me gusta coser, me gusta coser ropa. Me gusta coser ropa como blusas. ¿Por, ¿Por qué me gusta coser? Me gusta coser y cosía desde niña. I have been sewing since I was a little kid. Cosía desde niña, desde niña. Desde que era niña, muy niña. 
10 años. Porque eh, para mí, para mí es muy útil. For me, it's very useful. Sí. Mm -hmm. Me gusta uh, coser ropa. Me gusta también coser uh, colchones o colchones, uh, uh, cosas así para la, para la mesa, para, para proteger la mesa. Sí. Uh, me gusta coser. Incluso, ¿dónde está? Uy, no lo tengo. Uh, uh, col, colchones para la cama. Colchones, colchones grandes. Quilts para la cama. ¿Por qué me gusta coser? Me gusta, cos, uh, me gusta mucho coser porque es una actividad creativa. Mm. Es una actividad muy creativa y puedo usar colores distintos, materiales, telas distintas. Uh, puedo crear cosas muy bonitas como regalos, regalos para mis hijos, regalos para, para mi hermana uh, y cosas útiles como ropa. ¿no? Uh -huh. Pero es una actividad creativa, artística. Eso es todo. Uh -huh. Bien. Uh -huh. ¿Entienden? ¿Tienen preguntas de la tarea o no? No, of course. No, bien. No. Ok. Muy bien. Uh, a ver. Um, I would like you to feel free to throw in a filler word when you do your little speaking next week. And I don't want anybody to feel self-conscious about speaking. I know many people do, but you should not because number one, it allows us to practice that pronunciation a little better. Uh, it is okay to make mistakes and this is always a safe zone. Uh, I may on occasion correct you for word usage, but always, of course, in a gentle way because, you know, that is the way we learn. We learn from the, our mistakes and you should never have fear of speaking on account of making mistakes. The one thing that is sure is that you will make mistakes and it's okay. We learn from the mistake and how to fix it and how to plug in the new, different, correct word usage or the different pronunciation or the different word order. And the only way you learn is by doing that. Uh, you have to fall and stumble a little bit before you can walk. So, está bien. Vale. Okay, always feel free to email me in the middle of the week if you've got questions in prepping for this. I will send you an email post-meeting here, because, oops, I'm running a bit over, perdón. Um, I will send you a meeting with all of the links to the files we used in class today. I will send you uh, a link of the video we opened with so you can listen to those filler words again. Um, I will send you uh, a link to show you a, a screenshot on Amazon of uh, what the book looks like. Um, you know, it might take with deliveries going a little bit longer than we all like uh, a bit longer. We won't use that book formally until lesson three. Okay, está bien. Todo está bien. Everything good? Um, we are going to cover next week as a kind of a grammar thing, um, a little short lesson on whether or not to use el, la, los, las. This was a topic during the spring interim, which came up. Do I use el, la, los, las, or do I use no word at all for the? It's a topic of some confusion. Um, it won't give you the, the perfect, There, there is no one rule that'll help you, but there are some things that will help you with that. Um, so we're going to plan for that 
next week. Uh, y eso es todo. That's it. Bien. Vale. Vale, magnífico. Entonces nos vemos el lunes, el 29 de junio. Estamos casi el, al fin de junio. A ver, ok. Cuídense mucho. Take really good care of yourselves. Those COVID numbers are looking bad in our state. Cuídense mucho. Take really good care. Sí. Pónganse, por favor, las mascarillas. Wear those masks. Come back healthy. Ok, está bien. Gracias. Gracias. Hasta Adiós. lunes. Gracias. Hasta lunes, de nada, de nada. Es un placer, es un placer. Hasta lunes. Adiós.